you think antioxidants and you think like expensive lifestyle, lots of expensive organic fruits, lots of expensive organic veggies, but really antioxidants can be very dirt cheap. So I've got the most bang for the buck antioxidants, like literally ones that you could walk down to your local grocery store that has a pharmacy and probably find. You could go to Walmart and spend three or $4. And the thing is, usually I'm all about quality, but these particular antioxidants that I've found in this case are ones that are so inexpensive to make, quality generally isn't compromised too much. So you can really get away with grabbing the $3 bottle of this stuff if you really wanted to. Let's go ahead and dive into the first one. The first one is alpha lipoic acid. Now, if you take this out to the mainstream, there's about 50-50. Like some people think it doesn't work at all. Some people think it works very well. For the cost, it really does seem to work well. And anecdotally, alpha lipoic acid has been something that has been a staple in my antioxidant arsenal, especially when I increase my training intensity for like 12 years. So it's produced in the body naturally, and normally it helps out with mitochondrial function. So it helps out with energy manufacturing, obviously great for active people. But we also are seeing that it has a powerful antioxidant capability as well. There's a study published in Free Radicals in Biology and Medicine that took 600 milligrams of alpha lipoic acid versus placebo for 90 days. What they found with this ultimately is that subjects that took the ALA had decreases in lipid peroxidation. What that is, is when we have fats that go rancid in our body or fats that become oxidized, they go through lipid peroxidation. So when you have less of this happening, you're reducing the oxidative stress on fats themselves. Why is this so important? Well, because things like our cell membranes that are made up of fats, when they become rancid, for lack of a better term, or acted upon by reactive oxygen species, it can damage a cell membrane, making it more insulin resistant, causing all kinds of problems. But what's really cool is if you look at the data, it looks as though alpha lipoic acid is particularly strong for people that are athletes. So there's a study that looked at ALA versus placebo. They had them do one standardized training session, and then they had them do one week of very high intensity work. What they found is that there was reduced muscle damage, reduced inflammation, improved recovery, and improved squat performance in the alpha lipoic acid group and not in the placebo group. So that's why when I increase my training intensity, I take about 600 milligrams of alpha lipoic acid. And I try to take it on an empty stomach because it seems to be a rather fragile antioxidant. This next one is a really inexpensive one that gets thrown under the bus all the time because we see it in ingredient lists and we don't really think about it. But straight up vitamin E is really, really powerful. You just need to be in like the 800 IU to 1500 IU ballpark to really get much benefit. There was a study that was published in the journal Kidney Disease that took a look at people that had diabetic issues, like they were uh, neuropathy, they were like later stage diabetic, and they gave them 800 IUs of vitamin E or placebo for 12 weeks. They found that the subjects that had the vitamin E ended up having significantly increased levels of glutathione. Glutathione is a naturally occurring antioxidant with our body that's one of the most potent. Now, how does this apply for people that maybe aren't sick? Well, glutathione helps neutralize and recover from acetaldehyde, from like alcohol. So maybe you drank a little bit too much, or maybe you just have a generally unhealthy lifestyle you're trying to turn around. Increasing glutathione production by taking in vitamin E is a very inexpensive way to help combat some of that. Another one that I kind of want to throw in there as a bonus that people don't think about as an antioxidant is a probiotic. People don't consider probiotics antioxidants because they're not. You're, you're feeding the microbiome, right? You're supporting the microbiome. But people do not realize that some of the widest bodies of research are surrounding the microbiome and its anti-inflammatory capabilities and its reactive oxygen species neutralizing capabilities. We have more endogenous antioxidant production the more diverse our microbiome is. So it's kind of a shortcut I would honestly just say adding fiber in is probably one of the cheapest ways to improve your overall antioxidant binding capacity of your body. Not only do the minerals and the vitamins that you get from fibrous veggies help you, but you also have the fiber itself feeding the gut microbiome. That's where adding an inexpensive probiotic could work really well, but you gotta pay attention to probiotics because there's a lot of garbage out there. People ask which one I use, so I pop the link down below for seed. It's called a symbiotic. It has a capsule inside of the capsule. It's a really cool technology. So I don't typically recommend any probiotic. This is pretty rare for me, uh, but those that watch my channel know I talk about seed quite a bit. So that link down below gets you 30% off your entire order with seed. So it gets 30% off that daily symbiotic, which is really, really fascinating science on multi-stage delivery for the bacteria as well as the prebiotics that feed that bacteria. So very, really, really real stuff. Anyway, that link is down below 30% off. This next one is lutein. 
Lutein is what is called a carotenoid, and it's one of the most inexpensive antioxidants you can find. But you also find it in like yellow bell pepper, you'll find it in eggs, and it's particularly good for the eyes but we're starting to see it might do some other things as well. There's a study published in Investigative Ophthalmology and Visual Sciences, and it took a look at rodent model retinal cells, but it found that when these retinal cells were exposed to moderate amounts of lutein that you could get from the diet, it prevented apoptosis and reduced the reactive oxygen species, ultimately protecting these retinal cells. So it's at a master level reducing inflammation. So that's where we're starting to see well, this might just target the eyes, but it also might master regulate inflammation. So although lutein seems to sort of laser target the eyes a little bit more and retinal cells, it does have a master antioxidant effect too. And bang for the buck, it's phenomenal. This next one is probably literally the most bang for the buck because all of these are great. But when you get down to the minerals that have antioxidant capabilities, they are very potent. And this next one is zinc. Zinc, we've heard about a lot, right? It's obviously got some powerful effects at the immune system. It works synergistically with vitamin D, but it's also a powerful antioxidant. There's a study published in Pharmacological Research that wasn't just any ordinary study. It looked at 10 trials. It was a big analysis, a big review paper. And what they found is that generally speaking, subjects that supplemented with zinc had higher levels of glutathione, and higher total antioxidant binding capacity. That means overall, it increased the body's, in totality, ability to neutralize free radicals. Why is this happening? Because this is a very big deal at a very master big switch level. Bottom line is it is a cofactor for what is called superoxide dismutase, arguably the most powerful built-in antioxidant within our body. So without zinc, you cannot really synthesize and create superoxide dismutase. But zinc is also required to form cellular membranes. So without zinc, we would be running into this issue where we can't actually form the membrane properly and it might be dysfunctional and not operate right. But another thing is that zinc works in a very odd way because it neutralizes, sort of binds to and chelates iron and copper and prevents iron and copper from affecting lipids. So what happens is iron, just like if you were to leave an iron dumbbell out in the rain, it would get rusty, iron oxidates a lot. And when it binds to fats and it affects fats, it just has a massive oxidative effect if it's in abundance. It turns out that zinc neutralizes this. So it helps combat and counteract copper and iron, which are very, very oxidative. So we have sort of a counter-regulatory effect. For an inexpensive mineral that's not really categorized as an antioxidant, it really packs a potent, potent punch. This next one is interesting because it's what's called a catechin, EGCG. Now, EGCG is a component of green tea. It's not the stimulating effect. It's not the caffeine. It is what is called a catechin. Teas have different catechins in it. And it looks as though EGCG is A, a potent antioxidant, but B, seems to laser target the central nervous system a little bit more. So there was a very, very large review paper that looked at human model, animal model, and in vitro research. They found that by and large, EGCG was very potent at reducing inflammation. Like we saw this across the board in human, animal, and in vitro research. So it's safe to say it's an anti-inflammatory. But what's really interesting is when we look at the research on the neuronal side. So this study was published in Neuropharmacology. What they found is that when EGCG was added into the equation with people that had like spinal injuries, there was essentially more protection from neuronal inflammation. And it might actually help you sort of rebuild and repair nerve cells even faster. So if maybe you have an injury and a nerve injury, this could be something that actually helps repair or aids in the body's ability to repair. Now with EGCG, you don't really need much. It's something again, 40 to 100 milligrams, and it doesn't have the caffeine in itself. So if you get straight EGCG, you can really get this effect without caffeine. You can also use green tea extract, but a lot of times that has a little bit of caffeine in it as well, but it will contain the EGCG as well. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. See you tomorrow.